Huh? Just, but but the, the point being that you know he he tries to help those around him regardless of circumstance, regard you know that and he loves to question authority, especially when uh, he, uh, God, there's a fourth doctor code I can't remember. It's basically uh, it was like the you know people that um, you know just sort of like disregard facts to make it fit their worldview, you know that that kind of thing. It's it's basically he fights corruption, he fights tyranny, you know he's a, he's a humanitarian, you know, and then, you know, yeah, in in the true sense of an anarchist, not the what most people. Well, do you yeah. think do you think he's looking in his personal life because he's gone through so much that especially in the ten years he's so um, tormented in many ways, mentally and physically that in all of this he's just looking for tranquility and peace mm -hmm. within his own life. Also within the universe, uh, he's always wanting to go to the Isle of Orion just to take it easy, relax, get away from it all. You well, know? I, I I think it's just well, it, if you're looking at Tenet or you know later ones, I mean, you know, he's an old man. It's like we we all want peace, but you know, we still want to pass on and what we believe in. And he's also at, at you know recovering from yeah. major yeah. trauma. And, yeah, you know, that's the whole like Eccleston mm -hmm. to Tenet transition is that. Excel Eccleson is this war vet who has just done something very horrible, mm -hmm. and, and he's finally reintegrating into society because right. you see, like you know, he, you know, he's he's found something to cling on to in, in Rose, whereas before, who knows how long he's really been just kind of wandering around, just you know, he's still saving it. people because he doesn't know any other way, and that's who he is. Or maybe it was John Hurt that did something. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so yeah, but but it, he's he's you know he's basically it's he's a no matter what is happening like you know the first doctor like you know yes he kidnaps his first companions other than his granddaughter but you know he's he eventually sends them back to like it's only a day later since when they left so they don't really miss it. There's a lot more than a day later. Yeah. There's a lot more than a day later. Oh well at least he tried. <laughs> yeah. I always right. thought it was. But there's there's always been an attempt to do right. <laughs> yes. I mean, he 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 always tries to do the right thing and he tries to do yeah, it. I definitely think that there is a core nobility to the doctor that he is yeah. ultimately trying to make things better when he gets them. And while another part of him is that there's that morbid curiosity, it's like, ooh, this is something horrible. Great, I can fix this. <laughs> and so there's a, a childish sense to him that I think carries through all the doctors. Even you know, yeah. even Tom Baker was totally oh, he was being childish. <laughs> He's probably the most. <laughs> he had a jelly baby? The fourth doctor had a good quote about acting like a child. Well, uh, what's the point of being grown up if you can't have a child or something? Right. Yeah. And so, like, you know, core things I would find to find the doctor is a uh, selfish, maniacal, maniac, off-saving universe. Mm -hmm. But what I find interesting about the doctor is I see the same thing here about with the nobility and the whatever, but there's also this edge that says no matter what humans are up to, he is protecting humans. I mean, humans could be dead wrong, and he will protect the humans. I mean, they'll sometimes find some way to twist it so that it doesn't come out bad for the the other race. But it just seems like well, you know, that, that's, he is protector of humanity. What whatever loyalty he is. is that? I mean, you know, he's like, first. I mean, he, he also tries to protect the Silurians. Yeah. He just yeah. fails. With, yeah, like, yeah. He fails. <laughs> yeah, I I I think it's like like he doesn't discriminate. I mean, maybe humans are his favorite. I mean, that, you know, we all have our favorites on something. <laughs> You know, but you know, this is what I was Actually, but late, later, I, Doctor Who, he very much over that. I glossed over it. Like, okay, the, we're, we're really going to do Sophie's Choice right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. He very explicitly says he is, you know, I am here to protect the humans. Don't be touching my humans. Yeah, he's, 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 he's very explicit at the end. Several, several times yeah. throughout the series makes a preference about, you know, as much as he complained about being stranded and exiled on Earth, yeah. Earth is always been apes, like yeah. Yeah. nine calls him. And he still very much has a soft spot for. I mean, even you know the Master calls him out on it several times. But he also tries to help 
other races, and he's also like, yo, come here. You know, they're, you know, they're, can't you see they're just in their infancy? They, they give them a chance to, you know, try and introduce humanity to other future or other aliens and such. But this doesn't talk to human beings or children, you know, and human beings are, is a self destructive race, you know, that are capable of destroying themselves and anybody that comes across a human being. But, you know, he has that point to him, but then there are also times where, uh, you mentioned the data test last episode, I just saw last night, so this is my mind, where uh, he was speaking to, uh, I think it was uh, Donna's grandfather, oh, and, you know, and, uh, and Tana says, you know, uh, when I look at you, it, uh, look at you like giants, you know, so he knows that humans to him are like children, but humans, if directed the right way, can do the impossible for good, you know, so... That's one of the reasons why he, you know, they say they ran off in the first place because the time lords weren't doing anything. The time lords just sitting back and it's like, all right, we're time lords. We've got control and we're not, you know, let's go back to your own thing. Well, there, I mean, I mean there's such an, like a, aristocratic, aristocratic, right, you know. Technocratic, I suppose. Right, tech, yeah. I mean, they're just, they're so stuffy and just, you know, stayed. It's just like, they're, they're just rigid and mm -hmm. it's, like you, 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 I mean, which, which, you know, one sense is great, you know, from direct Star Trek, but at the like same time, the the yeah, I mean, but sometimes you have to interfere because it's, you know, there's a child about, crying and no one's paying attention. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, there's, there's this very bad thing that's very destructive, the Daleks, Galactus, whatever, you know, in, in, their, you know, that's their nature is to destroy, and you would like to protect things. So, yeah, it's not. When you say he's not political. It's not political in the sense right wing, left wing political. But as a kid, a child who grew up during the Cold War era, um, when you know, we were all going to die tomorrow, um, I do see politics in the sense of what you were talking about. With, you know, we're talking to ourselves when we say humans are perfectible. Um, when he does talk about the, I, mean, I think he's a little bit of the separating humanity into many of its aspects and then using himself as a parable with, as you say, the, the very aristocratic time lords who won't step in and the master who's our evil selves and all this. So there's politics, but not right wing, left wing, but politics. But maybe, the, but maybe he feels like he's also protecting his children because, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, you know, human beings, what was the companion that said uh, to uh, the tenth doctor, oh, uh, you know, you're alien, you look human, and David Tess says, well, maybe you look Gallifrey. So yeah. how do we know that maybe humans are uh, an extension of Gallifrey? Yeah. Um, well, I, was just, I was just gonna say in relation to his infatuation with humans or his desire to protect them, is I really think um, he mentions a lot this kind of like infantilization of humans, that they're young, they're, they're just starting their cycle, and I think a lot of it had to do with losing faith in himself and Time Lords in general, yep. and seeing humans as a way of redemption. Like you were saying, they're they're guidable, they're moldable. You can push them in a direction where they can do great things. And the what, way what, that was the doctor about the guide humanity? Yeah, but maybe <laughs> I, I, like to me, it just feels like he lost his faith in Time <laughs> Lords mm -hmm. and yeah. all the things they've done, and he feels like he can redeem that through humans. Yeah, so, I mean so. that's actually a really good good idea. It's that you know humans, you know, what, why is the doctor love the humans so much? Because he could be involved with them and hopefully do better than the King Alfreds or are sitting in a bubble. Because well, he does, he does mention a lot. Like they used to be a great race. He even yeah. says it. They used to be this. They used to be that. But they're not anymore. Not just because I killed them all, but because. <laughs> 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 but, but because they may have turned evil, or they may have done the doctor something. Doctor or either was that. exiled or went into self-exile and ran away. I mean, you know, because it, you know, way back with. The first doctor grabbing the old, you know, rickety type Gordon, you know, ET TARDIS, you know. Who stole who? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, well, and then, you know. Dives, yeah, and then we need to clear, clear, you know, clear Oswald, obviously. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, that that's sort of been always a part of that, where it's just, he's been a wanderer and he found something he likes, you know. I mean, if you're, you live, it, you know, it's kind of a metaphor for we're, we're all sort of alone in the world at some point in time and we find something we like and we want to help that. You know, I mean, I can certainly relate to it because I, uh, I 
you know, moved from, I lived in St. Paul and I didn't really have a whole lot of neighborhood kids around me and then I moved to, uh, you know, kind of a bedroom community area outside of that, not too far from it, where, you know, I didn't really see anybody after school because I was in a more isolated neighborhood, so there weren't really kids around. And then, you know, I moved out here and I didn't know anybody for, I, I mean, about the first 70 years almost. You know, so it's it's a sort of, you know, you find something and you, you want to help people. You know, even, you know, I... Getting involved. Yeah, it's getting involved. Yeah. You know, going back with the, with the you know, gal friends were not getting involved, and he wanted to get involved, and he wasn't getting in with gal friends, so exit stage curtains. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. He isn't that involved. I mean, we see him do things like well, he post Harriet Jones wreck the upcoming Britain's Golden Age and then just get out of there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so he, he doesn't get involved in a slow way. <laughs> it's been one or two episodes where we got to see exactly how this works. <coughs> and Logic the third power of three makes him go nuts. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he he definitely isn't getting involved in the getting his hands dirty. He's not running charities. Yes, I mean, you know, you can say the same thing as Superman or Batman. Well, you got millions of dollars. You've got all these great powers. Why don't you like? feed and clothe all the hungry and stuff. It's like at some point in time, it's like you can only do so much. And sometimes it's just setting an example. Or it's just, I have the power to stop the really hard things that nobody else can do. And that and that's what I can stop, do. Who else is going to stop the alien invasions? Yeah. Well, you know, also on the same token, though, if the doctor kept having a more active involvement in the shaping of humanity, we would just become dependent upon the doctor. Yes. If we start screwing up, well, the doctor can go back in time and change it. And so, as a being as old as he is, and seeing the effect that like the Time Lords may have had on other cultures, knows that the best thing for humanity is to try and guide them and not to be directly well, it's, involved. Yeah, it's 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 one thing just to kind of save them and you know, save people. You know, you're saving people from alcoholism, and you got to let them live, live their lives rather than setting it out for them all the time. They have to be able to guide themselves. You know, you know, you'd like to, to, you know, you do that. You basically like you're you're taking away all their, you know, self responsibility, self choice, all that kind of stuff. So it's, you know, it's it's a fine line you're going to walk between. Well, if I'm going to do everything, then, you know, he becomes what he does. What he's been fighting against is the tyrannical overlord. You know, at that point where, instead, it's like he's just I'm going to help you, and then I'm going to step away, and then we'll. You know, you guys got to figure it out. You know, so. Uh, what was the Green Earth? That was a, a good example of that. Where, you, like, you, know, you know, he's he sets it up, sets it up where it's like, all right, be the best humans. You, you know, be the best of humanity right mm -hmm. now. Let's go and get this piece. And like, oh, you, you're not the best of humans. So, and the whole <laughs> frustration of that, <laughs> where you, you know, like, what's that was such a good sass line. What? That was such a good sass line. Yeah. Where you were like, you know. You had one thing to do and you screwed it up. Like, you weren't the best, you're the worst. Like, mm -hmm. you know. so doesn't get it right all the time. Mm -hmm. Or is it humanity that doesn't get it right all the time? <laughs> you guys touched on it, but uh, you mind digging a little deeper into your Because I thought that the whole thing with the Daleks gets really strange and interesting with the Doctor's reaction where they're his arch enemy forever. But he actually seems to have this deep sympathy for them in a lot of the newer episodes, at least. Mm -hmm. Where in the old ones, I mean, it was clearly the Daleks bad, Doctor good. But it's, they, they made a much more yeah, it, nuanced it, it, they definitely, than the new ones. I mean, you know, you, when you had Dalek, and he's all like frothing at the mouth, because yeah. that's, you know, I've just gone, I'm still recovering from this trauma of the war, and I, here's the symbol of that war. I'm like, and you know, get out of the way, Rose, I'm going to blast it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then you get what uh, was it? Uh, Asylum of the Daleks, yeah. where he's like, I'm actually helping the Daleks. <laughs> well, I think a large part of that has to do is prior to the Mighty Morphin Dalek Rangers, uh, <laughs> the, the Daleks actually were taking humanity. Yeah. They had they had run out of their own genetic code, so yes. they were yeah, taking and, uh, yeah. Bad Wolf. Yeah, and so I think the Doctor was reaching out to the human portion of the Daleks at that point. It's like, you have humanity within you. I can save you now. So prior to that all happened. Yeah. And then there's 
like you know the Daleks take Manhattan. Evolution of the Daleks. Yeah, evolution of the Daleks. Daleks like, sec, yeah. Daleks sec. He's like, here's a chance for the, the Daleks to evolve into a way that's. You know, I've done the productions. It doesn't look good. This this doctor guy keeps putting us putting an end to things. So let's try and try this left field thing. It might just work. It's just crazy enough to work. What do you mean you're shooting me? I, I, I think it's it's sort of, you know, like even if you hate somebody, it's it like familiarity breeds contempt, sort of thing. But it's like when that, their that person's gone. You know, unless you're completely stone-hearted or just psychotic in some way, you know, you're gonna be sad that this this thing is gone, whether it's like an entire species or an individual. You know, and, and that's, you know that shows up I, in the Genesis of the Daleks episode. Yeah. Talking about. It's like, you know, think of all the things that have come together, all the people that have come together in opposition to Daleks, and then do I have the right to do that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's just it's if you have like, you know. You've got a person that you really hate this in your life. I mean, if that person is gone, you know, you're that that person is gone. That all that hatred and all that stuff, it's just sort of it, you know, it's wiped away because now you're, you know, whatever interaction that you had with that person, they're no longer there. You know, they can't make that decision to be good, to be bad, to be different, whatever. It's just they're gone. And then that's you know you're talking about the end of the, the end of the life, you know. And ultimately, you know, I, I think that's like he's trying to preserve life in any way he can. Unfortunately, you know, can't make an omelet without breaking eggs, I guess, or something. But you know, it's. Is there a reference to the egg shape? <laughs> no, can't make that. That's 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 you know, it just, it's, you know, that person's gone. I mean, whether you, you know, you know, I mean, it's, I wouldn't wish, you know, like a terrible fate even on my own worst enemy because well, it there, just, there's another argument. Yeah, yeah. There, there's an argument that says, though, that if you, know, you have an incredible evil, you know, death, sorry. There's an argument to be had, though, if you have an incredible evil, like, you know, the earlier versions of the Daleks where they were absolutely evil then you could argue that maybe not having them around is actually better. Regardless of, you know, of everybody coming together and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So the, the, fact, the fact that at least with um, the Asylum of the Daleks where we're being a little bit more sympathetic to Daleks, to me, that, to me it's coming across as the writers being nostalgic for the Daleks because they're everybody's favorite, you know, villain. Yeah. But now we're kind of crossing the line and we're being a little nostalgic for them and I think we've lost something. For, uh, be, because of that kind of nostalgia for the Daleks. Okay. They've lost a little some of the evilness. Yeah. Well, I think just particularly in the Asylum of the Daleks, why they were more sympathetic was because they weren't Dalek perfection. Like, they were rejected. So they weren't even fully, they were Dalek, but supposedly they were all, had lost their minds, or they were imperfect in some way that they had already been rejected. So they were like the cast off that they couldn't destroy. So they just kind of locked them up and like hit they're, them away. They're the people that can't take care of themselves. Yeah, so it's almost like so, sad. Like, you know, like, oh. so we, we, <laughs> need, you know, they need to be helped, you know, and it's like, it's kind of weird how these things that are like trying to destroy everything, they're not perfect, they're taking care of their own in some way, shape, or fashion. <laughs> Instead of getting rid of them, which is not very Dalek like. So. so just realizing that we've had Emperor Daleks, we've had Civil War Daleks, now this has given us the Parliament of Daleks. And I'm wondering, you know, this, transi this transition of Dalek governments looks like so. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, They've gone from, you know, uh, oligarchy to. Uh, democracy. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, you had kings with parliaments at the yeah. same time, so it's you know, it's just it's sort of you know. Yeah. Nice. But we didn't, we didn't see any emperor <laughs> in this one, did we? No. I no. Uh, you know, I think it was. I guess technically with the uh, bad wolf parting of ways, it's kind of an emperor oh. dollar. Yeah, if you go way back in Daleks, aren't the Daleks originally kind of produced as if they have a hive mind? I, mean, I thought that the very, very early island, it's not democracy, it's, well, a, but it's it, a shared mind. But, 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 even, but, but even like, even a hive mind, look at the Borg, look, look at bees. You still have the Queen Bee, you still have the yeah. Queen Borg. You, know, saying, you, know, you have a cyber controller kind of and they're pretty hive minded. Yeah. You know. And, yeah, 
Um, so, bring, it, bring up another, which we've had 50 years of Doctor Who. We have this gorgeous, looming special that please be so good, because we yes. have so, <laughs> so much expectations. So much is writing on it, right? It's more than a little bit greater, go down in flames. <laughs> yeah, so. There's no middle ground with Moffat. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you guys, what do you think? What are you expecting? Well, what I really wanted was in some way, um, you know, we've had the two doctors, we've had the three doctors, mm -hmm. and I would have really wanted to see the four doctors, because we have the fifth doctor, just to get a fourth doctor episode in there. And, um, you know, McGann only has the one movie, and he has all these great audios, which I consider, mm -hmm. the only audios I consider is canon, canon mm -hmm. is yeah. the Paul McGann's. Um, and I think he uh, didn't get a fair shot uh, yeah, through his audio, but I, I think he was fantastic. And I think 